There we go. Good evening and welcome to today's Balanced Hatha Yoga Practice. If you've got a block today, it will be helpful. If you don't have one, that's okay. If you've got a pillow or a folded blanket that you can sit up on here at the beginning, that will be useful as well. So we're going to begin by coming into a comfortable seated position. So you want to be sitting with your sitting bones grounded, which means as you press your sitting bones into the ground, you become taller, reaching the top of your crown of your head, the words are alluding me, up toward the ceiling, bringing your chin in slightly, lifting your lower belly, having nice posture, and resting your hands lightly on your lap or on your legs. You can close your eyes if that's comfortable for you, or you can keep them open, whichever you prefer. So we're going to begin today with some breathing to help us energize our practice. So a quick word about our breath and our sympathetic and parasympathetic nervous systems. When we inhale, our sympathetic nervous system is activated. That energizes us and wakes us up, gets us moving. And when we exhale, our parasympathetic nervous system, the one that helps calm us down and restore us to order, is activated on the exhales. So at the beginning of our practice here, we're gonna lengthen our inhales to help activate us, to prepare us for our practice. And at the end, we will lengthen our exhales to help us become calm. So beginning with some even breathing, breathing in and out through your nose. Try to bring symmetry to your breath. Inhales the same length as the exhales. And then we'll slowly begin to increase the inhales. So I'm going to count to a count of five for the inhale and a count of three for the exhale. And you can breathe along with me or at your own pace. So go ahead and exhale and then inhale, two, three, four, five, and exhale, two, three. Inhale, two, three, four, five, and exhale, two, three. Inhale, two, three, four, five and exhale two three inhale two three four five and exhale two three inhale two three four five exhale two three inhale two three four five and exhale two three and last one inhale two three four five and exhale two three and you can play with that breath on your own if you're needing some energy gradually increasing your inhales and keeping your exhales about the same length so in a comfortable seated position i'm going to come on off my pillow but you're welcome to stay up on yours and you can stay with your legs crossed or if you'd like you can bring one foot on top of the other thigh I'm starting with my left foot on my right thigh interlace the fingers and reach the arms up toward the ceiling while lowering the shoulders away from you okay take a couple breaths here in and out through your nose growing tall while keeping the shoulders down Good. And then we're going to lean slightly to the right to get a stretch through the left side. Come back to center. Grow nice and tall on an inhale. And then lean to the left. Get a stretch through the right side. You're welcome to put the opposite hand down for support if you'd like. Keep both setting bones grounded. And back to center, release your arms, and then leading with the chest, you can fold forward just as far as is comfortable. And you can allow your head to drop if that feels all right. 
Take a couple breaths here. Good. On your next inhale, grow nice and tall. And we're going to switch the fold of your legs, cross of your legs. Inhale to grow tall, interlace the hands, and exhale to bend to the right. Inhale, grow tall, and exhale, stretch to the left. Good. Then back to center, release your hands, and you can slowly fold forward. And you can allow your head to round. And just fold as far as feels comfortable in your body. Always listen to your body. If something hurts, back away or take a break. Stop the pose altogether. Keep your breath flowing in and out your nose. Good. And walk your hands back to your shins. Very good. All right, we're going to go ahead and go into table top position. So hips over the knees, shoulders over the wrists, and instead of a regular cat-cow today, we're going to do cat-cow circles with our rib cage. So we're just going to make a big circle with our belly button, imagining that it's drawing a big circle or oval. You can make these as big or small as feels good. And if you prefer traditional cat-cow, you're welcome to do that as well. Good. And then we're going to reverse and make circles the other way, drawing the belly down and up toward the ceiling and then back down. And our spine warm and moving here at the beginning of our practice. Come back to neutral and we're going to go into a variation of tiger pose so we're going to start by bringing the right foot up leg bent at about a four, at about a 90 degree angle and then the right thigh about parallel to the ground and you can stay right here or you can walk your right hand in just a little bit and grab hold of your leg with your left hand it's a little bit harder of a balance a little bit of a chest opener you can grab the leg or you can keep both hands down. Keep the breath flowing in and out through your nose. Good. And release. And then we'll bring the left leg up again. We're trying to get the leg bent to about a 90 degree angle and the left thigh parallel with the ground. So you can bring that left hand in. A little bit closer to the right if you're going to grab behind. You might find that one side is easier to balance than the other. Press through all five of your fingers and keep your breath going. Very good. And release. Walking the hands forward a little bit, making sure all 10 of your fingers are spread. Your pointed, your pointer finger is pointing forwards, both of them. Tuck your toes and begin to lift your hips up and back. We can start with legs bent here in this first downward dog. Try to get your ears between your upper arms and see if you can keep your weight evenly distributed between your feet and your hands. And you can gently pedal the feet, bending one leg at a time, gently stretching out the calves. And then you can go back into your downward dog, either with bent legs or you can begin to work your legs towards straight, engaging your thighs, 
pulling them up towards your hips to release your hamstrings and allowing your heels to work toward the ground. Hug those upper arms toward your ears and press through all 10 of your fingers. Good. On your next inhale, we're going to come forward into plank. If you're pregnant or you'd like a modification, you can drop down to your knees. Otherwise, you can keep your knees up with your legs nice and straight, chest pulling forward, shoulders right over wrists, those thighs pressing up toward the ceiling. And continue to keep the breath flowing. If you need to go down to your knees for a break or even back into child's pose for a break, feel free. Otherwise, we'll stay for three more breaths. Good. And on your next exhale, lift your hips up and back to come back into downward facing dog. Good. We'll come back to tabletop. Rest for a moment in child's pose, so bring your knees wide, big toes together, hinge back in your hips, and allow your chest and your forehead to come to the ground, feeling free to put a block or a pillow underneath your forehead or your chest. It's completely fine if your hips don't come all the way down to your knees, wherever they land is just fine. And if this pose is completely inaccessible for you, you can roll over onto your back and bring your knees into your chest. Walk your fingers forward a little bit to lift your forearms up, up off the ground. Take two more breaths and we're going to press back up into downward dog. Good. Come back through tabletop, tuck the toes, lift the hips up and back. And then walk your feet closer together. And we're going to lift the right leg straight back. And if your leg needs to be a little bit bent, that's fine. And keep that right hip level with the left. We're not opening to the right on this one. We're just pulling that right heel back away from us, trying to make a nice line of energy between the right heel and your hands pressing into the ground. Good. Lower the leg. See if you can make, bring your heels a little bit closer to the ground. And then on your next inhale, lift that left leg up. Again, trying to keep your hips even. Feeling free to bend your knees if you need to. Pressing through your hands and pulling that left heel away from you. And keep your breath going. And on your next exhale, you can lower and bring your feet shoulder width apart again. Take two more breaths. Downward dog is a nice inversion to help us calm and add another way to activate your parasympathetic nervous system. And begin to walk your hands and your feet together to come in to a forward fold. So you can bend your knees as generously as you'd like and you can have your feet as wide apart as you'd like. Your hands can be resting on the ground or on a block or even on a chair or on your legs. You can shake your head from side to side, up and down, releasing some of that tension that we accumulate in our necks throughout the day. Bring the weight a little bit more forward so that your toes are a little bit heavier than your heels. And if you're feeling nice and stable, you can hold on to your elbows for a moment and begin to work your legs a little bit straighter, continuing to breathe in and out through your nose. Good. And bend your legs, bring your hands to your hips, and come up to stand. Very good. All right, we'll take a moment 
and mountain pose, and then we're going to do some chair squats. So your feet can be either shoulder width apart, or your feet can be together, big toes touching, heels a couple inches apart so that your second toes are pointing forward. Go ahead and close your eyes for a moment and sense where your weight naturally wants to shift and see if you can intentionally bring the weight to the middle of your foot between the front and the back. And we're lifting the lower belly, keeping the shoulders moving down away from the ears. And again, not lifting the chin, but pulling the chin in just a little bit so that the crown of the head can rise to create nice length through the spine. Good. You can go ahead and open your eyes and we'll bring the arms up so that they're parallel to the ground. And on an inhale, we'll sit back and this time our heels will be nice and heavy, sitting back like we're sitting in a chair. You can look down, pull your knees back so that you can see your toes. Keep your lower belly lifted as much as you can and see if you can keep a nice line from the crown of your head to your tailbone. And on an exhale, press through the feet, rooting down to rise up. We'll see if we can keep the arms straight out in front, but if you need to rest the arms, they can come to your hips. So we'll inhale to go down into chair and we'll exhale, pressing through the feet to rise. Inhale to lower, heels heavy, hips pulled back. Exhale to come up. Inhale to lower, exhale to rise. Let's do three more. Inhale to chair, exhale, press through your feet to rise. Inhale to chair, Exhale to rise. Last one. Inhale to chair and exhale to rise. Very good. You can bring your hands to your hips for a moment. Take a couple deep breaths. Reconnect with that smooth, even breath. We're going to do a couple bird poses now. We're going to start with a stork, and these are both balance poses. So we're going to shift the weight into the left foot, and we're going to bring the arms back parallel to the ground, but this time we're going to bring the palms up. And we're going to lift the right knee so that the right thigh is about parallel with the ground, and point the toe straight down toward the ground. If you need to be near a wall or a chair for balance, you're welcome to use something for support. And if your right foot begins to cramp, you can flex it or even make circles with that toe. Keep your shoulders down, micro bend in the left leg, press through all the parts of your left foot and keep your gaze steady on one spot. Good. Bring the leg back down. Bring your hands to your hips for a breath. Go ahead and start shifting the weight into the right foot, feeling all parts of that right foot press down into the ground. And then extend your arms back out, palms up, shoulders down away from the ears, and lift the left foot so that the left thigh is about parallel with the ground. And you can point that left toe straight down to the ground. Lift the lower belly, feel your belly button pulling toward your spine to create that length and protect the lower back. We're always working to create length in the spine as we move through these Hatha Yoga poses. Again, find that fixed spot for your eyes and press through, rooting through that right foot, growing taller as we press through, down through the foot principle of routine to rise. As we press down, we naturally grow a little bit taller. Good. And exhale to release.
back to the ground. Very good. We're going to do one more balance pose, another bird pose. We're going to do the flamingo pose now. So shifting the weight back into the left foot. We're going to go ahead and hold on to the top of the right foot with the right hand. We're going to do a nice stretch through this uh, right foot. <coughs> Sorry, right quadricep. There we go. So you're going to start with your left hand on your hip, broaden through the collarbone, and then if you like, you can bring the left arm straight up overhead. Again, with the, just like with the stork pose, we're pressing through that standing foot, keeping the lower belly lifted. Try to keep, if you can, your knees close to one another and the shoulders moving away from the ear. Good. And release. Then we'll stretch on the other side. So start with your right hand on your hip, hold on to the top of your left foot, press through the right foot, bring your knees close to one another, lift the lower belly, and if you'd like, you can bring the right arm straight up overhead. So we're getting a nice stretch through the quad while we're working on lengthening the spine and balancing. And connecting with our inner bird. Good. And release. Very good. All right, we're going to move into warrior two now. So we're going to bring the feet pretty wide apart, as wide as you feel comfortable and stable. Second toes pointing forward initially. Hands on the hips, lift the lower belly to point the tailbone toward the ground, shoulders away from the ears, and then moving at the right hip socket, we're going to externally rotate that right foot and bend the right leg to about a 90 degree angle so that the right knee is over the right ankle. You can bring your arms straight out, pulling your fingertips away from each other, and turn to gaze over your right fingertips. Take care that your knee is not going past your ankle and that it's not collapsing in, but pointing the same direction as your second right toe. And again here, we'll keep the lower belly lifting, tailbone pointing toward the ground, and then both the shoulders and the hips are facing forward. Good. And on your next exhale, can straighten the right leg. We'll point the right toes forward and now externally at the hip. Rotate, rotate the left foot out, bend the left leg so that your left knee is directly over your left ankle. Pull your fingertips away from each other and turn to gaze over the left fingertips in warrior two. You can feel this left hip wrapping underneath you and the right thigh engaging up. Those two actions together help keep your spine in good alignment. Two more breaths here. Good. On your next exhale, straighten and point both toes forward. If you've got your block nearby, go ahead and grab it, and we're going to stick it behind our right heel. If you don't have one, though, that's okay. So we're going to externally rotate again on the right foot and bend the leg just like we did in warrior two, but we're going to prepare for extended side angle. So again, right hip hugging under, left leg engaged, fingers pulling away from each other, pulling slightly to the right, and then you can either drop your right forearm down to your thigh if you don't have blocks, or if you'd like, you can place your hand on a block behind your right leg or even on a chair. And we're going to rotate this left arm across our body so that the palm is now facing down. And we're creating a nice long line of energy between the left fingertips and the left heel. We're going to rotate the chest ever so slightly toward the ceiling, pressing evenly through both feet. 
Again, see if you can feel your right knee press against your right arm, especially if it's behind that block there. You don't want the knee to collapse inward. And one more full breath on this side. And on your exhale, press through the right foot and come up to stand. You can take your block with you. Straighten the leg, turn the right toes in, left toes out, and now take your block and set it behind your left heel. Go ahead and bend that left leg, coming into good alignment, left knee over left ankle, left hip wrapping under, right fingertips pulling away from each other, slightly pull to the left, and then either drop down with your arm down to your leg or put your left hand either on a folding chair or a block behind you. Sweep the arm in front of your body so that the palm is now facing down alongside your ears and you're creating a nice line between your left, right fingertips and your right heel. And now we'll begin to rotate the chest ever so slightly toward the ceiling and feel that left leg pressing backwards. If you've got your hand behind you, you should feel that left leg pressing up against it. Take a couple breaths here. Extended side angle pose. Good. And on your next exhale, press through the feet to come up. Straighten the leg and turn both toes forward once again. Good. If you've got limited mobility in your hamstrings, you can put a block right in front of you here or two blocks. Otherwise, you can move that off to the side. Second toes are facing forward. Engage your thighs, lift the inner arch of both feet, hands to the hips, lead with the chest, nice flat back, and begin to fold forward. Go as far as you can with a flat back and then allow yourself to round, bringing your hands to the ground or to a block or a couple blocks or even a folding chair. Shift your weight forward so your toes are a little bit heavier than your heels. Feel your right thighs engage and see if that doesn't give you just a little bit more space in your hamstrings. And on each exhale, see if you can soften just a little bit. Perhaps going just a little bit deeper into the fold. Good. I'm coming back up to a flat back. And again, if you've got a block that you want to stick your hand on, you can. We're going to put the left hand directly under the nose. And then we're going to lift the right arm straight up. Or you can put it on your hip. Benefit to having it on your hip as you can feel if that right hip tries to lift. And as much as possible in this twist, we want to keep the back and the hips nice and parallel with the ground. So opening to a gentle twist to the right. Try to keep that left hip lifted so that it doesn't sink down. That helps keep this twist in your upper back. And keep the breath flowing. Good. And then put your right hand down where your left hand is, right under your nose. And maybe start with your left hand on either your left hip or on the small of your back so that as you begin to twist to the left you can make sure that you're not opening your hips to the left but keeping them parallel with the ground and with your hips in good alignment if you'd like you can lift your left arm up twisting to the left continuing to breathe Good. And come back to neutral. Go ahead and bend your legs, bring your hands to your hips, and come up to stand. Very good. All right. I'm going to do one more standing stretch before we move down to the ground. So with your feet not quite as wide as they were for Warrior Two, we're going to turn the right toes the side, externally rotating the right foot, 
and then the left foot is turned in so that your foot is about at a 45 degree angle. And you can have your heels in alignment or you can have some space between your heels and that gives you a little bit more of a stable base for balance. We're going to hug the left hip forward so that it's even with the right hip. And then if you can, you're going to reach behind you and hold on to your elbows. If not, you can clasp your hands behind your back or even just put your hands on your hips. Once you find a good spot for your arms, we're going to bring the chest up and forward, lift the chin and just do a gentle upper back bend to prepare for pyramid pose. And on your next exhale, begin to fold forward. And you can keep your hands behind your back or bring them to your hips. You can even grab a block or a couple blocks or a folding chair and put your hands on something that's elevated off of the ground. And here again, we're keeping this right thigh engaged, keeping the spine as long as possible. And one more breath on this side. It was pretty cold when we started today, but I'm nice and warm now. On your next exhale, come up to stand. If you're using the block, you can switch it to the other side. Turn the left foot out, and you can put that block down in front of you again. And then the right foot is turned at a 45 degree angle. So you're going to turn it in until the foot gets to about a 45 degree angle. And then turn the right hip so that it's in line with the left. You may need to adjust your feet so that your hips can be comfortably both facing the side. And we'll begin either interlacing behind your back or holding on to your elbows, whichever you'd like, and lift the chest up, pulling it forward, lifting the chin, doing a nice back bend. And on your next exhale, you can begin to fold forward again, either keeping your hands where they were or putting them on something in front of you whether that's a block or a folding chair, you can even rest it on your leg. Just try to maintain the integrity of the spine by not rounding it too much here. With the left thigh engaged here. And then keep that breath flowing in and out through your nose. Very good. All right, set your block off to the side, but not too far. Come up to stand, and we're going to move down to the ground. So from this position, you can slowly bend both legs, catch yourself with your hands first if you can, and then gently come into Thunderbolt pose. So we're going to sit on our heels if that's comfortable for you. You can also sit with your legs crossed if you prefer. Very good. And we're going to do a couple side stretches here. So interlacing the hands like we did at the beginning. Bend to the right. And to the left. And once more on either side. To the right. And the left. Good. Release your hands. You can put the palms of your hands behind you. Fingers pointing back. Lift the chest. And take a couple breaths. Very good. And come back up to neutral. Go ahead and swing the feet out in front of us, grab a hold of the block, I'm going to put it between your knees, and we'll sit back on our back. Okay. Feet about shoulder width apart, hands can be alongside your body, 
and go ahead and hug that block with your knees. If you're pregnant, you can just hold it right here. Otherwise, I've got a two, couple different options for just a little bit of ab engagement here. You can lift your legs to about a 90 degree angle and you can hold right here. Or if you'd like an even deeper ab work, you can put your hands interlaced behind your head and do a couple crunches with the breath. So we'll exhale to lift the chin straight up. Inhale to lower. Exhale, lifting, leading with the chin. Exhale to lower. And again, you can skip these and you can even have your feet flat on the ground. I provide lots of options to make this as accessible as possible. Or whatever position you're in, make sure you're pressing that lower back into the mat while hugging that block with your knees. And we'll do two more if you're doing crunches. And last one. Good. Keeping the block between your knees, we'll lower the feet to the ground and bring your arms alongside you. We're going to prepare for a bridge pose. Bridge pose. So press down through both feet, hugging the block with your knees to lift your hips up. You can press down through your arms. You can even interlace your hands underneath you, pressing through your arms, pressing through your feet, lifting your hips. Release your glutes as much as possible. We want to keep this in the back and in the legs rather than in the glutes. Press through your arms, press through your feet. Good. And on your exhale, lower back down. Take a breath and we'll do that one more time. Good. Press through the feet, lift the hips. Press through your arms, interlacing behind or underneath you if you'd like. Releasing your glutes. Imagine that you're tilting, if you were standing, you're tilting your tailbone toward the ground or toward your knees right now. Keep that length in the spine. Good. And lower. Very nice. All right, we can move the block off to the side and we'll go ahead and bring the knees into the chest. And you can have your knees wider apart or you can have them together. Maybe you'd like to make some gentle circles with your knees, giving your lower back a little massage. Good. And then go the other direction if you're making the circles. And drop your feet to the ground. We'll cross the right ankle over the left knee, either staying right here or bringing your left knee into your chest by interlacing behind your knee or in front of your shin and pulling that left knee into your chest. Go ahead and keep your feet flexed here. Imagine that you're pressing this right knee away from you, even though you don't have your hand there to press it while you're pulling the left knee in. Good. And switch sides, crossing the left leg, the left ankle over the right leg. And you can stay here, or you can bring your right knee into your chest by interlacing either behind your knee or in front of your shin, keeping your feet flexed. Good. And if you're pregnant, you can begin coming into your Shavasana on your left side. For everybody else, we'll do a gentle spinal twist bringing the 
legs up and letting them fall to the right. If you've still got your block handy and your knees don't quite make it to the ground, you can stick the block underneath your right leg. Try to keep your left shoulder glued to the ground. And you can keep your head in neutral or you can turn and look over your left shoulder. If you'd like, you can put your right hand on your left leg. And bring your knees back to center and let them fall to the left. Pressing the right shoulder into the ground. Keeping your head either in neutral or turning to gaze over the right shoulder. And bring your knees back to center and we'll set up for our resting pose. So if you're having any sensation in your lower back, a nice pose is to bring your feet wide and let your knees fall together. If your lower back's feeling okay, you can extend both legs straight out about mat width apart. Either way, palms can be up, shoulder blades together, allowing as much of your body to connect with the ground as possible. And we'll take a moment here to bring symmetry back to the breath, even inhales and exhales. Go ahead and begin lengthening the exhales to help us become calm and still. I'm going to inhale to a count of four and exhale to a count of eight, but please go at a rate that is good for you, taking care not to strain your lungs or overfill. Just inhale to a comfortable fullness and exhale as slowly as you can. So you can go with me or at your own pace. Inhale, two, three, four, and exhale, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Inhale, two, three, four, and exhale, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Inhale, two, three, four, and exhale, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Inhale, two, three, four, and exhale, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Inhale, two, three, four, and exhale, two, three, four, five, six, seven, and last one. Inhale, two, three, four, and exhale, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Very good. And you can allow your breath to just move naturally in any way that's comfortable for you. And for these last couple minutes here, allow the ground to, re to receive you, allow your body to be heavy against the floor. If you notice places where you're holding on to tension, you can gently release it if possible. And we'll just take a couple minutes here to allow our body and our mind to come to stillness.
And you're welcome to stay here for as long as you like. And if you're ready to go ahead and come out of it, you can gently wiggle your fingers and your toes. Open your eyes and moving nice and slowly and bring your knees in. Roll to one side and using your hands, slowly come back to a comfortable seated position. Well, thank you so much for practicing with me, for giving me some of your Monday evening. I hope your week is off to a wonderful start, and I'll look forward to practicing with you again soon.